And outside of this de-risking on a global level, where we said 25% of correspondent banks globally had been de-risked, um, this is actually some data from our report, which is more specific to Bangladesh. Um, an interesting trend here is that you can see over the last five plus years, there's been an exponential growth in Bangladesh in terms of number of bank locations. I mean, that is part and parcel, part of your growth story as well as a, as a country, right? Um, but the interesting phenomenon here is that in terms of the number of correspondent relationships that you see, it's pretty much, it's a very, very small, insignificant growth. So if we continue this trend of your growth story, your market growing, etc., how can we also, you know, in, decrease this gap? How can you start to build out these correspondent relations um, and start to be um, you know, more accessible to that global market as well? So another issue, complexities. It kind of comes back to this tit for tat regimes element. Um, I'm sure a lot of these faces are familiar to you. Um, but again, for you as compliance professionals, um, financial institutions, etc., there's so many complexities. One day you've got Iran sanctions, the next day you don't. The next day you do again, okay? This is the kind of world that we're living in and these politics, in terms of how politics are going on, it, it makes it very challenging. You've also got this at the moment. There's another summit coming up with Trump, etc., in Asia again. Um, great forward steps, but what does it all mean? What does it mean for sanctions, etc.? Again, a lot of complexities. How, how, how do you know the answer, right? We don't often know the answer to this. Venezuela as well. There's a lot of issues, as we all know, globally in Venezuela right now. Um, a new government that's not recognized by the existing regime and recognized by global partners. What's that going to be the effect on the global economy, the global sanctions, etc.? We don't know. It's a lot of uncertainty again. So these are some of the complexities that we see the likes of yourselves and other markets having to deal with on a, on a daily basis. If we look at regional threats as well, we talked about CTF already this morning, all right? You're playing a front, a front line role as part of that in terms of actually, you know, stopping channels of financing, etc. on CTF. If we look at terror groups in Southeast Asia, for example, there are numerous terror groups around the region, and it's not just in Southeast Asia, it's many regions globally, okay? Um, but as we've seen as a trend, there's been a lot more funds being channeled into these organizations. How is this money getting through, etc.? Is it part of our legalized financial system, etc.? Okay. And then more and more, there's more actual sanctions being put on actual entities related to these organizations, etc. So again, an ever increasing complex environment for yourself, and also to just keep track on on a daily basis. The 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 risk of all this, and this is quite a, a shocking sort of uh, picture, I suppose. But this is a Marawi Island in Philippines. Okay. And this is from 2017. And really, this is a, a prime example of where, yes, governments, they are going to do their part. They're going to create regulation, um, etc., so that you can try and implement practices to try and prevent this. But we really do play a major part in prevention here. Um, this was literally a battle in their own home turf against these organizations, which led to ultimately devastation. All right? um, but we, as compliance professionals, etc., are playing in a very important role in this story. How do we prevent this money going through certain channels? How do we prevent fin financing, financing of these organizations, which can bring a lot of turmoil to your own markets? You don't want to disrupt this growth story. Another example.